My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. Taya's right. Your brother is in no condition to travel. That's all I'll say on the matter. It's Mid, Gav, and your uncle we should be thinking about now. You know how I feel about this. But your brother's stubbornness knows no bounds. I'm starting to think it runs in the family. What will it be today? And how could it not? But are we any better? I cannot claim. Such are the wages. Ironic, then. Allow me to educate you. Good. We've sent curse breakers to Martha's Rest, Dalamil, and Northridge. Hopefully they can help maintain the peace. Cole told us everything that happened. It's a bit of a worry that both the Republican and Imperial armies are in disarray. But it was good to hear that the people stood their ground. Do you like being struck by thunderbolts from on high? Then don't let anything happen to Mid. Yeah? Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Here's everything we've received and everything promised. There you are. All done? Quick look. Always something in there.
lift my arms. The curse, it's... You just need some room. Oh, stay here. You saw that. There's barely been a shipment in since the skies started boiling. A few more days without a visit, and we'll have to start eating the blankets. Seems the hideaway is oh, lost. Blasted book! Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing. Thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and, uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing, and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen! And I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favourites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favourites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only... Turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, that's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. Lawsman Harpocrates, I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valisthea, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah. So the fabled San Briquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. <sighs> now, <laughs> Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers. Ugh, how very San Briquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. 
But what about the Drake's Mint? Saint's Bonnet, in contemporary parlance. A herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard fried mortress of skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. Sid, perhaps you can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales, the ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. Seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. Did you see the pair that got hauled into tires? Aye, all their fancy silks stained red. Gonna do uh... But no more. <laughs> uh. Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. Oh, I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. I think Nan might be in trouble, and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dallymill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but... But she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but... I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. Lady Karen! How's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade, then? Both in and out of the hideaway. Hmm. Can't complain. Wait. What 
exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care. But here you are today, raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating. Uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I... I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be the were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Aye, it's a dangerous world out there. Best stock up while you can. Thought you knew better than to put stock in unfounded gossip. What with all the colourful tales attached to your name? Coin purse weighing you down. Come again. Oh, don't. I'm not much bothered either way. So what do I owe the honour? What's saying for you, dear? Bad, if I do say so myself. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded, and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. Why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalamil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. But that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is. I'll find out who's been making up lies about Poe and Anne, and when I do, I, I, I don't know what I'll do, but it won't be pretty. I heard the Emperor was impaled on his own son's spear. Never. Dean on the boat. We're all gonna die! You hear me? The 
What do you reckon we should do? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Well, not anymore, it's not. <gasps> oh! And just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We dis... dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Miss Mididol said, The best way I see how something worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh... About that. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then... Then... Um... You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh Gooch? I don't think he'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved. When I tried weighing an apple, and then somebody ate it. It's not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. You know what part's supposed to move, and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. There. All finished. Yep. 
Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We're Miss Middle's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah. Hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mitterdoll and Miss Shirley, I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Hey, look! We never used the cogwheel! You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? We've received word that the displacement stacks have arrived safely in Canva. The rest is up to mid. Is a storm coming, Sid? Will there be thunder? Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies have been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill. One she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. Thank you. 